This week on Rockstar Superhero. This chat has to be one of my favorites. The brain behind the brawny musical endeavor known as Contemplator, Christian Paco, is a truly interesting and open guy and his music makes me happy in the best ways. Contemplator takes old school ideas, flips them around, skins them, pumps in calories and nutrients, and lays the new sounds bare to you to groove and stack your day by. It's pretty great stuff, simple and to the point. To quote David Lynch's Twin Peaks, the conversation around the dinner table is lively. Lively indeed. As always, I'm grateful for the chance to share new music and ideas with you, so let's just jump into the caboose. This is Contemplator, and you're listening to Rockstar Superhero. Thanks so much for taking time to hang out with me today. I really love what Contemplator seems to be about, so I can't wait to find out what it's really about. Mm-hmm. But but it's it's just so interesting and challenging musically, and you take me to a lot of places that I want to go and a few places I don't, and I think that's really vital to music nowadays. Oh. So thanks for being here, bro. Great. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's off today. A good start, and it's not even started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll just cut it right there. We're good. Yeah, yeah. There is something about you know the kind of music that you create is is something that um, I admit selfishly that I wish I had the the capabilities to do. I'm a I'm a former session drummer, um, mm-hmm. local you know local wannabe, so to speak. But you know, I I don't think I ever had the courage to to take big leaps musically and. What I what I love about Contemplator and you, of course, particularly is is, you know, I was fortunate to discover you through a great promo company in New York, uh, friends mm-hmm. of mine, at Ear Split, and yeah, you know, they send me so much stuff. It's kind of hard to wade through and sift through the things sometimes. But the very first track just blew my mind, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know this isn't a question, and it's not a good way to start, but. Oh. Yeah, I just love what you're doing musically, man. So really, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm bowing to you for the people who can't <laughs> see this. I'm bowing to you, wow, 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 wow. and um, I, I love what you're doing, man. It's, it's really rad. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, thanks. yeah. So, you know, I don't want to ask you the same basic questions. I, I feel like I have to ask some of them, right? The uh-huh. where do you, the where do you live, and the influence questions. But yeah. I would actually like to start just right on the top with contemplator with what you're about musically Uh and and the motivation behind creating this project you know and is it more than a project is this your next step or is this a you know sort of a a side vehicle to the other work you're doing Uh it 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 started really as um i was coming back from a from a tour with a where i was playing bass live to um, temporarily mm-hmm. just for that tour a band called augury from montreal mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. it's death metal like progressive and mm-hmm. the the guys in that that band the way they composed i i found that really interesting and uh inspiring because really they they are very much um they're very bold in what they're doing and it's 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 almost like uh, their music is um, themselves projected mm-hmm. through true sound. Really, it's mm-hmm. very authentic, and uh, and I saw the passion. Well, I lived with them the passion of playing that music to um, to other people, and I saw that the crowds really respond to that. And um, you know, I, I had something of um, my own path already. Um, you know, I, I was already composing music at the time, uh, mm-hmm. really passionate about video games and about movies and about making music for that. And I was already working in that industry as a sound designer. Mm. So coming back from all that, 
um, it kind of gave me the courage to start my own thing. And uh, Contemplator became a vehicle where I could just do all the music that I ever wanted to do in a single thing without any yeah. limit. So it ended up being a kind of blend of progressive metal with a little bit of orchestral music into that into it, but it's really just that this mix is what all the music I love ends up sounding like if I blend it all together at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, too, because, you know, when I received your email, your booking email, and we connected sort of that way, what I recognized in you, I know this sounds really strange and like sort of weirdly spiritual, <laughs> is that there's there's something, and, and I know listeners know this, I know everybody actually knows this, that there is this sort of secret spiritual component to human connection. Mm -hmm. And we know when music is sincere, it's, it's the difference. And I'm not saying that pop music, you know, what I would call Hollywood music, you know, the big brand stuff isn't real. I think it can be fun. I think some of it is fantastic, but most of it doesn't really sit with me or people like me. And I assume maybe yourself mm -hmm. because it's written by somebody else and then performed by a pretty person. Mm -hmm. Right. I, and, yeah. and, and that, and again, it doesn't mean it's bad, but mm -hmm. what I love about what you're doing. And like you mentioned with Augury is, is that for those who are present, for those who are in the middle of either a performance or they're sitting down, like I did with contemplator and listening to it through headphones, I recognize the sincerity and the transparency and the truth in it. And, and I think that is the key to otherworldly transcendent music because you realize, Oh, they mean it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I love how you put it. Really. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's true. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's the, the gamble I decided, I decided to take when I came back from, from that tour, when I started that project, really, that, that I just add, I just had to do my own thing yeah. and that it would work. The connection would work somehow. Right. I, I kind of always, always say, I, I'm not always talking about that, but I, I, I say sometimes that um, when you're trying too hard to, imitate something that you love. I, I see a lot of musicians do that. Like mm -hmm. they just really want m more to, to hear more of their, their favorite band. So they, mm -hmm. they make that and that's, that's cool. But, totally. but I, I think if you do that, you're only going to end up being a slightly less good version of of that thing <laughs> so so true because it's not original right it's the it's um it's like 95 percent. even yeah. if, if even if it's top performed right at the best the highest level it always sounds like a mimic of something else yeah uh i don't know it's it's a complex subject and i, I you know my own mine is not really set on it because I have close friends doing what they love and they love doing that. And that's kind of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it's no secret. We, we had that conversation already, so there's no hard feelings. Yeah. And I, I just want to also touch about what you were saying about pop music and it being, it, it, it there, there's some parts of what's being produced by, let's say the music industry. That's that I consider like a, its own completely different thing, really. They, they're not, we're making music for the sake of it and we're mm -hmm. trying to express something with it. Whereas some people are creating entertainment more like, well, more like a product and it's really well-made and it's really polished. And there's a lot of things to, pre to appreciate in that music, mm -hmm. but it's just something different that I think if you're going to try to appreciate it, you got, you're, you have to look at it differently a little bit. Right. 
kind of you, vague, but yeah. <laughs> you, well, no, it's interesting. I mean, I have no idea how old you are, and you don't have to share it with me, but I graduated high school in 1984. Okay. So I'm 56 years old. and I, I'm so, 38. So okay. you graduated on the year I was born. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel like crap. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> but, but what's interesting is when I was in high school, my senior year, we had a talent show. And I remember these kids came out and, and break dancing was a new thing, at least for the white kids, <laughs> oh. Oh. right in 1984. And I remember sitting in the auditorium at this talent show and watching all these kids, you know, pop and lock and do all their cool moves. And it was amazing to watch. But I remember listening, you know, as the music's playing, it was something that, you know, I hadn't heard in white suburban America. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I hadn't heard it yet. It was, you know, it was very popular in New York and all the urbans, but, but not where I was at at the time. Um, it, it quickly changed. But what was interesting was I remember sitting in there, even being a little bit jaded as a, you know, as a 17 year old boy saying, eh, this is never going to go anywhere. Because to me, I saw rap or at least what it was doing back then as copying other, you know, like taking the beats from, you know, famous disco okay. records or the like, and then putting, right, Sometimes. putting a rap over the top of it. Oh. And I remember even thinking back then that, okay, I wouldn't call this music, but I would call it art mm -hmm. because it's a new creative vision of what has already come before it. Now, yeah. do I think it will stay? No. I remember, you know, we all thought there's no way this is ever going to last. This is a fad. And of course, in a lot of ways, it's the most popular music in mm -hmm. the world. So clearly my ignorance and whatever you want to call it um, got in the way of, of the truth. But it's interesting that when we're kids, the one thing our parents always tell us is always tell the truth because you don't have to remember what you, what you lied about. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't have to remember your lies. Mm -hmm. And oh, I think, yeah, right? And I, and, I, and I think music is the same way. I think, I think um, most of us who are performers really want other people to fall in love with what we're creating, but we see what other people are doing who have had success, mm -hmm. and we start emulating that because we think that's the direction we need to go so people will pay attention to us. <laughs> and very few people will stand fast to what they do because they want to be successful or famous or rich or whatever. And, and a lot of artists fall prey to that. So I, I praise you for deciding that your truth is more important than the alternative because your fans find you and then they stay with you because simply put Christian, you're legit, you're real, you're making great material, but they know it's real right from the get-go. It just feels like it. They can feel it come through the door, you know? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, that's um, that's really what I was, that, uh, what I'm always hoping to achieve, really. Mm -hmm. um, I have the, have the luck of being a, a life situation where I can actually afford to make that music. I don't depend on it to, to live. I, I don't make a living out of it. I just right. really spend a lot of money <laughs> doing it. Actually. Yeah, that's what we all do. <laughs> but, and, and, and that I always come back to, to um, you know, close musician friends that I have that are trying to live from their music. And it's, it looks like you there's no choice but having to make some compromises on on the music you're making to to get that you know get that that uh, attention and that um, uh, that success uh, actually trying to reach success through compromise really um, right um, it it, it looks like it's something that's hard to live through like making art making music expressing yourself but knowing that you have to go through some hoops to to you know get more money out of it 
to make a living out of it because it's your passion. It's kind of a weird loop yeah. that I, I'm really lucky not to have to go through really. So yeah, not, not saying that I have it easy and I could, cause I could choose to, to do something, um, like trying to copy something or trying to, um, get into the, the whole, um, influencer game and make super cool videos and all that. I, I choose not to do that because it's spending energy on something that I don't really no, I wouldn't express myself through that. Right. Whereas I'm doing it through the music. So, yeah. Well, you just expressed it. I mean, the beauty of it is, uh, you know, you're sharing your very personal um, perspective right now. You know, so uh, fortunately for the people that are listening, they're lucky enough to hear a guy who's just doing yeah. a real a real thing. And, and, and I think that's the beauty of this show. I feel very, I'm so grateful to have met so many fantastic musicians over the years because I would like to think, and, and granted I'm wrong in some cases, I'm sure, but I would like to think that... Um, I know I'm talking a lot, I apologize, but... Oh, that's okay. I love um, it. Yeah. Is, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just that, you know, I would love to think that I don't want to call myself a tastemaker. I kind of joke that I am, but I, I feel like, you know, I was very fortunate to have parents that supported me as a, as a developing musician at a very, very young age. I mean, mm -hmm. I started really playing drums. I mean, technically, I always say it's four years old, but the reality is, is I actually started playing when I was seven. I mean, okay. real, like, you know, bought me a professional drum kit, the whole thing at seven. Well, right. But, but I mean, I showed interest when I was two, right. And by the time I was four, I, you know, I got a little toy kit and I was really playing along with records. So I guess where I'm trying to go with this Christian is for me, music came because I heard things on the radio and then I wanted to play along with them. And then I developed I, an affinity for the drums mm -hmm. and, and, Ultimately, I think I was fortunate enough that my parents had very diverse tastes. So I heard everything from old, you know, swing and jazz to, to uh, at the time, you know, modern rock. And here we are, you know, 50 years later, and I have a very wide musical palette. And I sense that in you. When I listen to, um, oh gosh, not what's the, f not the first track, but the first release, a uh, Zero Mask, right? Yep, yep. When I heard Zero Mask, I, you know, the first thing I did is, is I clicked on play and I listened to the first, say, 20 seconds. And I was like, hmm, this is atmospheric, right? Yeah. And then I jumped forward and then went, oh, <laughs> what is that? You know, like all of a sudden it was a metal sound. And then mm -hmm. it was a progressive, almost dream theater. I, I don't want to compare to anything, right? But I mean, it was the first thing that popped into my head. I was like, oh, this is kind of a Haken dream theater, Kansas rush thing, progressive rock, right? Yeah, and yeah. then and then it drifted around and tried other things. And I thought, okay, this is a multi-genre thing. Now I need to listen to it, right? Not just skip. I need to okay. listen to it. Yeah. And I realized, oh. I love this because it's a mini movie. Huh. That's cool. everything to me, man. I want I want my music to take me on a journey. I know that's a used, overused, mm -hmm. you know, but I want I want to be able to sit in the dark with a glass of wine and the headphones on. And I want to be able to just visualize the trip that Christian has taken me on. And Zero Mask does it in however many minutes it's it is long mm -hmm. it just takes me all the way through and and so holy crap i was ready man <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great the the yeah there's there's um you know you were right on the mark when you were you know citing bands and all that that's my musical background really um i grew up listening to dream theater like a whole lot mm -hmm. um the thing is, when we're talking about not copying anything and all that, or, or, not, or, or actually, it's more about I have no problem with influences showing through the music because actually, you no, know, it, it's part of, of of that being authentic thing that we were talking about. 
It's mm -hmm. as much part of me as everything else I'm trying to express in the music that, that is also part of me and is not necessarily about what bands I was listening to when I was younger, but what I've lived through, what I'm living right now, and all the other ex experiences that life, you know, throws at me. So, so it's, it's also great that, that it's so transparent in the music, you know, where some of the parts are coming from. So that's yeah. great. And, and I remember when I was really young, actually my, my parents, again, my father used to, um, well, still does actually, um, listen to a lot of progressive rock, the classic progressive rock of the seventies. So like, yes, Genesis, mm -hmm. Metal Child, and all, the, all those got King Crimson. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, and I, I, I have a distinct memory of looking at the, the vinyl art cover artwork of, of yes albums, for example, Roger Dean. Yeah. 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 Totally. And, and you, even just looking at the picture, you can imagine, you know, some sort of adventure or, or trying to imagine what the, the cover is about or what story it's trying to tell. And, and that also happens in the music. And that's a little bit of what I end up doing when I'm making my own music is like you're saying a mini movie. It's, it starts at point A and it ends at point B and there's really, if there's a structure in between, it's just, it happened like that, but I'm not looking to, I'm really comfortable with the idea of making a, a song that has, um, no real logic, uh, no real, whoa, no real logical structure. Mm. If that mm. ends up being like that and it sounds good, then that's what it is. And that ends up being kind of a, a trip or an adventure, I suppose. Yeah. It's interesting too, because you saying this, it actually makes me go back to the first time I heard zero mask. And then I think, Maybe it's not cinematic as much as it is like reading an audiobook. And, <laughs> and and what I mean is it's clearly there are chapters. Mm -hmm. But they melt into each other so well that it doesn't it doesn't sound abrupt. You found a way to take a moment that is like I said soft and atmospheric and push it into something that is significantly dynamically larger more aggressive without it feeling like it's you know a sudden door slam yeah and and that's the genius behind it and i and i try not to use the word genius but i think maybe in your case there is there is the splash of that and i think that's um that's worth celebrating man thanks um the thing is you know doing the the, the whole sudden abrupt contrast is is cool to do too but mm -hmm. it's but not all it, the time it gets old if it's only the only tool in your in your toolbox mm -hmm. so sometimes it's it's interesting to just see how you can start here and and build that tower you know, that musical tower to whatever height you're trying to reach instead of just going, well, I'm there and then I'm here because, you know, I want to go heavy like right now. Right. And, right. well, you know, you know, take them away, try to see what you can make happen in between. Maybe that's going to be interesting. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it, and I don't, it's nothing like what I'm about to say, but Radiohead's first hit, Creep. Mm -hmm. is a is a perfect example granted it's a very much a more pop or pop rock nugget yeah. but it's that same thing right it's the vibe it's the feeling in the intro and the groove and the yeah. and it's and it's sort of settled and and you're on this sort of mellow journey and all of a sudden johnny's guitars go kunk, kunk, and you just go like what and yeah. I remember in 93, I guess, 93, 94, when I first heard that on the radio, I did the same thing with that that I did with rap. <laughs> I did. I, yeah. I heard it and I said, oh, well, that's, you know, like, like it was, it was, the guitar was so shockingly hot in the mix. It was so loud mm -hmm. that 
I didn't see it for what it was. It was, you know what it was? It, it was an announcement. It was, it was a musical announcement. And I saw tears for fears about 20, 25 years ago when they came through Seattle and they actually closed on a cover of creep. Hmm. Yeah. And Roland, as he walks up to the mic, so, I mean, this is a, the encore. I mean, who yeah. does a cover yeah. for an encore? Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe King Crimson does, you know, they do a, a heroes, uh, David right. Bowie song. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but good company, right? <laughs> um, it, it, Roland walks out and he tells a story. And so we thought, it was going to be some cool B side, you know, uh, maybe mother's talk or something from the early, uh, you know, tears for fears days. And he says, you know, in 1993, I heard this song on the radio and we're like, what are you talking about? You know? And then he says, and you know, he tells the story. And at the end he says, and I just want to say one last thing. I believe this is the best song ever written. (laughs) And then he played creep and, and, and it was yeah. great because his voice really works with it, right? Um, but there, but there is something about, um, yeah, those moments, those announcements, like you talk about. But you have to do it right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's a case of I could imagine a band hearing "Creep" for the first time and and thinking, "Okay, we've got to do that on our next song. Let's try right. to do the same same effect, that same." impact it has and you know just getting 80 percent of the way there yeah because there's you know it it doesn't come from the same place right but you know what i mean going so let's so so i mean i'm sorry to stay on this but i think it's fun to talk with you about this Uh is is the let's stay let's stay on radiohead for just one second i know this we're talking about you today but let's say um fake plastic trees came out on the next album on the bins I personally think that's their best work. I think that's one of the greatest songs ever written. I love that song with all my heart. And the reason I love it is because it is a true masterpiece of dynamics. It builds and builds and builds to a point that you really can't stand it. And then it finally rests. But then it rests for a good two or three minutes. It's very sexual because it, it builds up to that musical orgasm and then drops off. Mm-hmm. And then and then sits in afterglow for a long time. And and what I love about it is the noise in the third verse. There's so much chaos and drama and anger and confusion that shouldn't work. It shouldn't work. And uh-huh. and and the reason I'm bringing this all up is because again, using you as my example, what I recognize in your work is it's not that it shouldn't work. I don't think the same things, but I recognize that it's doing something that really kind of hasn't been done thematically. Uh-huh. And, and I believe it. And I think that's really the whole thing that you and I are both trying to say is, uh-huh. do I believe he means it? Is, is this for real? Because this, if it's for real, then it's just a matter of time before your audience really finds you and then sticks with you. Because I've said this before, they never go away once they know mm-hmm. you're telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's something about um, finding through music someone that does the thing you really like. Mm-hmm. That's you never quite managed to get anywhere else right and you're like oh that's really cool i gotta keep digging that way and see what's what more they have to offer that's that's a really cool um thing when it happens when you're listening to music yeah you know in in the past i've asked a question about you know storytelling versus the idea of building a musical universe Mm -hmm. um but I, I think of it differently when I'm talking to you because I, I think about morph. It's it, it is pronounced morphos, correct? Uh, morphos, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, so I, I don't I don't say it out loud, out loud really often, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but morphos is the new record. It came out a couple of days ago, if I'm correct. Yeah, it 
uh, but yeah. I, I, I'm fortunate. I got to hear it because I'm part of the PR thing. But yeah, um, yeah you know, it, it's really interesting to me because it is all about world building. You've created these sonic temples, mm -hmm. um, these sonic journeys. I, I'm not going to come up with anything that hasn't been said, probably. <laughs> but but I love I love how each piece um, is its own complete. Um, universe its own little ball of sound and vision and fury and structure and somehow they the 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 work um is really compiled well so i think in a lot of ways i know i i feel like i'm just blowing so much smoke up your tailpipe today <laughs> but but i got to say that it, it it really you know the term album you know, yeah. it, it means a collection of something, right? A collection mm -hmm. of words, a collection of music. Mm -hmm. It's an actual album of songs or pieces that sound like they belong to to together as a family. Mm -hmm. But you've got one that's a mom, one that's a cousin, one that's a kid. Yeah, yeah. What I'm do you glad, think? What do you think about that? I'm glad to hear that you you're hearing that. That's that's great. Because I think it means there's an element, an element of cohesion through the whole thing, but it's really a collection of songs that were composed in roughly the same two-year period. Right. And I wasn't actually actively trying to make, um, you know, a collection of eight songs that would uh, sit really well together. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a side effect of, of something else. But um, actually, I, I'm just going to go off on a tangent. There's this, weird, there's this weird thing that happened creating that the, the songs for this album or actually just picking the existing parts of unfinished songs that I had laying about and finishing them for the album uh, is that they're kind of grouped in, in, in um, there, there's four groups of two tracks on the album that kind of, I feel like they're very related to each other um, in their feel and scope and mm. textures. So there's, the, like, there's the two we could call them the epics like the first and the last track really long uh, really complex lots of different parts and there's like two tracks that are shorter and maybe a bit simpler in their structure and more you know straight ahead um, uh, so th there's this kind of weird I guess what I'm trying to say is I was actively trying to make a cohesive album Mm -hmm. But there's element, elements of like random, ran, that, that randomly happen where things start to make sense together. Or as a listener, you figure out a sense in, in what you're listening to that really maybe wasn't really meant to be. But it, 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 you make sense out of it. You give it a structure. Yeah. And maybe it's a little bit... Um, similar to that um, effect you were talking about when you're listening to some mu some types of music that feel like uh, watching a movie or living an adventure or listening to an audiobook, you are making it up in your head because that's not necessarily what, it, you know, the adventure you're imagining is not necessarily what I was thinking about when I, I made the song, mm -hmm. but you're giving it your own meaning and possibly that's also what happens when you take the big picture of what an album is about and you see a structure in there that maybe wasn't um, wasn't deliberate at first. Right, right. That's you, you know, I, I, I didn't want to inter, uh, interrupt your thought. Did, did I jump on your, your thoughts? No, 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 no. I, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. A huge pause there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I'm trying to, you know, honor your words. Uh, 
you know, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable with all the praise I'm heaping on you. And I know I'm kind of laying on a little thick, but yeah, there's, there's a couple of thoughts that I have about this. And one is, you know, there was a movie that came back, came out back in 1985 and it was a, honestly, it was a fairly awful movie. It was a, it was called band of the hand. Um, but it had a message that I that resonated with me to d till till this day, mm -hmm. and it was a it was about it was like based in Miami, Florida, I think, uh, and and it was about these sort of young kids who were working. I, I don't even remember actually, but I think it was like these young kids who were like working for an FBI guy or something like that, and and, and they were each. Uh, like a specialist, like you had the thief and you had the computer guy and you had the driver, right? That's that, that idea. Mm -hmm. And, and like I said, it was an awful movie, but what was, I saw it like five times in the theater okay. for real. There's something special there. Be because of the message, which I kind of needed to hear at the time as a young musician, which is we're best when we're together. We are, we are, we are five fingers, but together we're a fist mm -hmm. and right. And, and, and I, I know that sounds cheesy, but I think about the, the record and especially the fact that you said, you know, of the eight tracks, you, you feel like they're, you know, mm -hmm. they're, tw there's twins yeah, throughout yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way of saying it. They, they make sense as a unit, like the album mm -hmm. is a fist and, mm -hmm. And and yet, right? You've got the driver and the computer tech, right? And, and and I think that's really really cool. So it's not a question as much as a comment, mm -hmm. but it it it's just so it's so funny because I, I I don't know why I'm so overwhelmed by this, but I I had such a profound uh, musical experience. It was such a pleasure. I haven't experienced. Since I listened to uh, Jean Michel Jarre, uh, uh, Zuluk in uh, 84, 85. Um, are you familiar with that album? No, no, okay. Sorry. So I, I he, know, I know, I know is I know the name, but I've yes. never listened to music yet. Yes, and now, so you're you're French Canadian, so you would know. I've never actually known how to pronounce his last name, but but Maurice Jarre is it Jarre or Jarre? No, it's uh, Jarre. Jarre. Yeah, okay, exactly. so so Jean Michel Jarre, um, yeah. he he Got released it. an album called Zuluk, which is one of the first records with musical samples on it. Mm -hmm. And he went all over the world and he recorded uh, snippets of dialogue from all these different cultures, especially in Africa. And then he made beats and patterns out of all of these sounds. <laughs> Okay. And, and some of it's really annoying. I mean, it sounds very dated, okay? But there is some of it that is so profound. And so I would tell anybody listening and you yourself, listen to the record Zuluk, Z-O-O-L-O-O-K. Okay. And just just listen to the first track. It has Adrian Ballou playing guitar. Oh, oh wow. Okay. And 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 um and Lori Anderson, uh, you know, the the visual and you know auditory artists from New York, um, okay. uh, and it's it's just awesome. The, just the first song is called "Ethnic Color," okay, um, and it's like seventeen minutes. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but it is so awesome. It is just so awesome. And and uh, my daughter is eleven, and um, I don't know. Just a couple of weeks ago, I sat down with her in the dark just like I discovered it in the dark in 1985 at my friend's stoner house. <laughs> and we sat on my couch over here and we turned on the TV and we just sat there and listened to ethnic color. And she's like, dad, this is so amazing. Wow. And, and it goes to show you, it was, again, it sounds very dated, mm -hmm. but there's something about it. That's all about the, the journey it's such a mm -hmm. visual visual masterpiece and um your record is the second time that's ever happened to me that's that's amazing uh, yeah. uh yeah 
<laughs> yeah, I'm. T- I mean, I'm telling my listeners, please, please, please. You know, I, I hate. To, I hate to just say like go buy something, but please buy this this new record because it's 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 so good. Uh, it's called Morphos, <laughs> but it's so so good. It's on Nefarious, if I remember Nefarious Industries. Uh, yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, but it's available on. Um, do you have a Bandcamp page or what's what yeah. what what it's, what's it's your website? Bandcamp. Okay. It's, uh, contemplatorbandcamp.com. Okay. Um, it's also on the streaming uh, platforms. Every one of them except Spotify. <laughs> okay. Well, good for you. You know. Good yeah. For you. Yeah. And um, th- there was something you were saying earlier. You know, the the, the f- everyone being stronger together thing. Mm-hmm. There's this thing that I I believe in that I'm trying really hard to to um, make happen with the music. And it's that if everyone is happy or feeling good around you, then Mm -hmm. everyone benefits because it makes everyone happier. So making something positive or, or having a positive effect around you is going to, you know, everyone wins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really what you're saying is it, it, it's what makes me happy about it is you're saying you lived something really positive through that noise that I put on record. Yeah. And that's, that's good because that's leaving a positive impact on the world around me. And hopefully that's what life's about. Well, you know, you know, if there's any one thing, so I mean, I was actually going to ask you a question about what have you learned from this experience, but the the funny thing is, is I think us having this conversation is what we're learning about the experience uh-huh. together and, you know, and through the music and what you've created is, you know, I, I've talked about this a couple times on my shows, but I have a very close friend um, who I was complaining to a few years ago about my life you know i was i'm having i was i'm not anymore but i was having a midlife crisis right mm-hmm. like i mean i'm telling you everybody you will oh, go through it oh, my yeah. friend uh, yeah i have yeah. no doubt yeah and 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 um it's a strange feeling because you you know you're valuable and you know you're worthy and you know you're talented at something you have something that's unique to you mm-hmm. But but there's this moment in your in your in everyone's life where there's this sort of alienation and separation from others. It's self. It's like this self-absorbed moment where you where you're like, well, what about me? What about me? What about me? Because I feel like I'm separate from everybody else. I see all my friends over here making millions of dollars. I see all my friends over here having successful um, marriages or, or right or, or whatever. Or, or, and then I, and then there's the social media crap, right? Like um, this guy's going to Iceland, that guy's going to Bora Bora, that guy's going to Mexico and I'm just staying in my town. You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's all of those things. Um, I think, oh man, boy, I'm I'm digging a hole for myself. But I think I I think you know it's 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 a beautiful thing when you make something so pure because you know what's so important. And again, what my friend said is music or whatever you're doing, Rob, is your gift to humanity. Your purpose is people. Your purpose is how you impact people. And whether that's through art or through leadership or through care and concern or uh-huh. right, like a long-term care, like you know, helping an elderly person get the mail or make food or change, change yep. toiletries, whatever. Whatever you're doing, life is about the impact of you on others it's not about you it's never been about you and once you realize that you can truly live in peace and joy and and so i knew when i was meeting you today christian i was hoping i could share that with you because the beauty of what you've done as dark as the moments can be on the record they are so much about spreading your joy 
into the minds of others. So you've created, I, I love the fact that you're wise enough to know that you've made this thing because it serves other people. Mm -hmm. It's a learning process. I, I've not, you know, it, I, I'm probably never going to fully understand the real meaning by, behind, you know, the words I, I said. I, you know, it's, and the words that you're saying, it takes, you, you got to go through life and live things and then you start realizing things and understanding concepts like that and giving meaning to what does it mean to exist and what does it does mean to live with others when you're kind of in your own cage of, you know, you're being your conscious self separated from everyone else, but right. you know, everyone is living the same experience or at least you, you believe in that. I was going to say you assume it. You assume it really, because you never really can confirm it. Right. <laughs> Well, and, and that's why, I mean, so so I'm going to preach for a second, but that's why social media sucks because it compartmentalizes people based on their likes and their dislikes. And it knows everything you don't know about you. It mm -hmm. knows you have an affinity towards a type of music, a type of movie, not just movies and music, but a type, a genre and a subgenre and a micro genre. It knows you, you know, like in my case, I'm married to a Japanese woman. It knows I prefer Japanese media. It knows I prefer a Japanese look, a Japanese woman. It knows uh -huh. those things. It knows yeah. I prefer a Japanese area, a sub, a sub genre. It knows I like Takarazuka city. It knows I like Saka Sedai. It no right. Which is crazy, but it knows it. And so it creates a barrier between me and those who do not. Oh, and yeah. then and then pits us against each other. So we create a conversation, which is total bullshit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we hate each other. So we'll have a, a louder conversation. So we'll bring other people in to have a louder conversation that then they can market to. Mm -hmm. And we all fall prey to it. Yeah. And we're addicted. And now... Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know how to untether myself from it because the truth is I don't need it and I don't even want it. But the times I've set my phone down, yeah, you go back to it. I go like, oh, my God. Yeah, like it, it's just this weird habit. It's the new – it is a drug. It is absolutely yeah. a drug. And, and um, so I'm sorry I'm talking uh, no, so, no, no, that's so, so, so much. But I have to say this. Fans of Rockstar Superhero, listeners of this show, you hearing me right now, please believe me. <laughs> Christian's work, Contemplator, this this thing that he's created, it's it's important. It's important and and pure and it deserves accolades and love and attention and it deserves to be shared and 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 because i feel like it's divinely inspired i'm not going to get all jesusy on you right now but i but i i do feel like it's divinely inspired you've been you've had spirit poured on you and that's awesome because you've you've said like you know in your own way right uh <laughs> Okay, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And 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 you're like, Ugh. you know what I mean? You you've 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 taken a pure thing and you've distilled it for us. And wow. and so so thank you so much for being outstanding and such a nice guy and so fun to talk to because you're badass, man. Thanks. It's my pleasure. There's so many, you know, we could keep going forever. <laughs> There's so many paths this discussion could take. I know. It's 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 crazy. Really, if there's one thing that I'd like people to take away from that music is, even if you don't like that particular jar of music, that that's how it came out. Actually, you know, the, the message behind it is what's, I guess, what's important and what's universal about it is. I hope it gives you something positive. I hope that the the, the message around it about being authentic and not um, fearing to be different and original and be the best at right. 
your own unique thing because we're all different we're all unique and we're all the best at that unique thing go out there and 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 make something out of it